I didn't have a dad growing up. And my mom was kind of busy dating guys. She'd usually find the low lifers because she didn't think much of herself. Do you understand? Yeah. She's trying to get happy, going out on dates, that sort of thing. And we had no money. I mean, this boy's worked since I was 11 years old, just so we had food in the house. When I mean food, we'd open the refrigerator, it looked like it was for sale. You understand? There was nothing in there. Because if there was mustard and a piece of bread, we'd make a mustard sandwich, and we'd be thankful for it. I've actually eaten out of trash cans. I mean, I've gone down to the grocery store where the vegetable man would put out vegetables that were bad, but he'd put them in a separate container because he knew there were people that poor. And my sister and I, we were little kids. Mom would be gone. For, we didn't have cell phones back then. You know, Mom would be gone for a couple days on end. We had no food. So we'd go down, you'd begin to look for food because you can get real hungry. You understand? I love my sister. She, she was two years older than me, still is. She led me to the Lord. I was scared of her. She could beat up anybody in my high school. All right? She was one mean junkyard dog until she got saved. And she got real nice. That's when I knew God was real. All right? She got filled with the Holy Spirit. She said, you need the Holy Spirit. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. It wasn't quite that easy. But there's a great respect that I have for my sister. Because she made me soup when I was five years old. <clears throat> so I missed out on a lot of the dad things. But I, I developed these weird fears. Like, I used to think, because it just me and my sister, we were little, left in that house alone. I used to think somebody wanted to break in and hurt us. Mm -hmm. There wasn't anybody that wanted to break in and hurt the kids, all right? But that's what I used to fear all the time. Mm -hmm. So if we had a window that didn't have window coverings, like, I wouldn't like those windows. They don't bother me now. I think, hey, in the morning I get to see out, all the better, all right? But not as a little kid. I used to think the boogeyman was going to come in and get me mm -hmm. somehow. Yeah. How many of you had little fears yeah. like that going on, too? So we had a, I had a place that I was safe. And where that place was that I felt safe was we had a dining room table and it had a lace tablecloth over it and it would hang down to the chairs. And I would get up under the chair, on top of the chair seats, and I could see out if the boogeyman came in. But I knew if he looked under the table, he wouldn't see me because he wouldn't think of looking on the chairs. I'm not paying attention to the world. I'm just out praying and walking early one morning. I go for a walk when I'm in LA. Every morning I walk for about five miles. Think of, and you think I have a belly now? Think of what you <laughs> if I didn't walk, okay? But it also keeps me from getting tired when I'm in front of you. You understand? So I do my part to eat right and exercise right. I was going out for a walk. All of a sudden got a vision. I was under that table, you know, with, with the lace. It was the time I was alone, just me and my sister, alone in the house. And I saw legs there. I had no fear. I immediately, instantaneously knew they were the legs of the Lord. And he, and he told me, Robbie, I was there with you. I was watching after you. Thank you, Lord. Yay. He, just, he knows how to father us. He knows how to speak. He was speaking my language. He gave me a vision. Another morning. You, you maybe have never heard of Andy Griffith, but it was an old show on about 100 years ago on TV. Yeah. Anyway, and it was Andy and Opie. Any of you yes. ever heard of yeah. Andy and Opie? Yeah. Okay, two of you have in the room. The rest <laughs> of you, you know, it was just Andy Mayberry, all right? It was just a simple little program about a sheriff, and everything was clean on it, all right? It was just sweet, and Andy loved his little boy, and he'd be walking down the street, tossing his hair like I always imagined a dad would. Huh? One day I left for the walk, it's 5.45 in the morning, I no more rounded the corner of our driveway onto the street, and I sensed the presence of the Lord just like a dad, and he tousled my hair. He said, I love you. You're my boy. Lord, thank you. Now, for some of you, that might not mean much. It means I'm accepted in the beloved. He loved, by the way, he loves you. He loves you the same way. But he loves me. Yay, yay, yay. That's where life is built. I am loved by God. And he's been there. And there are situations that will never rectify themselves until we get to heaven. But I trust him with them because of who he is. Amen? Amen. So on that blank piece of paper, <coughs> I want you 
to let him speak to you however he talks to you. Maybe he'll give you a vision. Maybe he'll give you a dream. Maybe he wants to talk to you in English. Maybe he wants to talk to you in whatever your native tongue might have been. Who knows? Maybe he wants to speak in tongues to you. I, I don't know. I'm teasing a little bit. But he wants to talk to you. He wants to tell you what he's been thinking about you. Now, I guarantee you, you don't have to be afraid of it. When you say on the, your paper, I have to be perfect, he wants to tell you what he thinks of that. Come on. You know you can't be perfect. He knows that too. Just let him love you in the middle of your imperfection. When you figure that out, you'll be a whole lot nicer to live with. You understand? Was that God calling to say he loved you? <laughs> they look embarrassed or something. You know? Anyway, so he's got my number. Does he have your number? Yeah. So I want you to let him talk to you. Listen to me. I want you to let him talk to you in first person. That means if he says, Girl, I've been waiting for us to have this talk. You right, and not you guys. If he's saying that to you, you need to listen to a different golf. All right, anyway, come on. <laughs> Meant to be a bit humorous, but you write, girl, I've been waiting for this talk to happen. I don't want your commentary. I don't want you to tell me, oh, I really thought highly of that, or I didn't think much of that. Just write what he says. Isn't that right? How many of you have ever heard from the Lord before? Raise your hand. So this isn't rocket scientists to, to us, all right? John 7 says this. Out of your innermost being will flow rivers, rivers of what kind of water? Living. Of living water. Well, let's see it happen. In other words, Lord, what we have, what we need, what we need to hear is already within you because the Holy Spirit is already within you. Do you understand? Yes. So you don't need to hear him out here. I like to hear the Lord audibly. I like him to write on walls for me, all right? Yes? Yes. But you need to speak what he's been speaking into your spirit. And some of you have been hearing him talk and whisper to you all day. Time you write that down. And let him. The reason some of you still have a little bit of problem in a couple of these areas is you've not, you don't know what he's saying. And tonight, I'm going to pray for you, and you will know what he's saying. Amen. 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 So we're looking for the rhema. The rhema is, we're kind of pushing past the logos. It's in line with the logos. But it would be, you know, I mean, I, we could talk scripture to one another. In other words, you could tell me your problem, and I could quote a scripture to you. All right? I know the word. But wouldn't it be better if the Lord just talked to you? And said, you know, like when he told Barney, I was there. Well, you could have said, well, Robbie, he should have given him a scripture. No, he was speaking that prophetic word for him. And that's the word I'm wanting you to push past and hear. It is always life-giving. And then whatever you wrote, let him address it all. <clears throat> one story. How many of you have time for one story before we go there? Thank you. Come on, the rest of you. No one back there raised their hand. Anyone want to encourage me? All right, thank you. I had lunch with a man a number of years ago by the name of Paul Youngie Cho. He was pastor at the time of the largest church in the world. Listen to this. 800,000 people on weekend services. That's not... You know, saying, oh, this amount of people say we're a part of this church. No, they do the count. Saturday, the multiple services. Sunday, multiple services. 800,000. I'm sitting at a table smaller than these tables with him having lunch. And, and I mean, what would you ask him? You got him there with you. All right. And the guy is funny. I mean, he teases about his wife just like I do. I, I enjoyed his teasing more, you know, and his wife thinks he's funny, too. I like that. But Anita thinks I'm funny. Thank God. Most of the time. <laughs> she actually likes after 40 years. She likes my preaching. I think that says something about that woman. She's got a miraculous love for me is what it says. But listen, so I said to him, Dr. Cho. What do you believe is your secret to you have you have ministered to a group of people in Seoul, Korea that have been steeped in multi-generational traditional cultural Buddhism and yet you've seen a prolification of the gospel, thank God. Huh? 
And, and I said, you know, you have 800,000 people. I said, we couldn't be your ushers. He said, yeah, we have 25,000 ushers. <laughs> All right. I couldn't even be your team of head ushers. How's that? You know, anyway. And, and I thought, what's your secret? You know what he tells me? He says, I pray and I obey. And I thought, well, that's pretty slick. But I pray and obey. So I'm thinking, how do I say this to him and don't appear dumb? I mean, come on, look who I'm sitting with. So I said, Dr. Joe, those are two of the most beautiful words in the world you just gave me. You pray and you obey. But if you talk to people in my life who know me best, my family, my you know, church staff, etc., they would say, and my best friends, they'd say those are two hallmarks of my life. I pray and I obey. And by the way, even over this weekend that we're spending, I have a whole group of people praying, interceding, fasting for you. You understand? That God would do something. Not that you just get bored listening to me, okay? That you actually hear from the Lord. Amen? Okay, so I said, I pray and obey. But I'm not seeing those kind of results. He said, Robbie, when you say obey, I feel like what you're saying is that you try not to sin today. I think, you know, that's pretty much it. He said, that's not what I mean when I say I pray and obey. He said, I get up in the morning and I pray through every need of my life. He said, I pray about my life, the weaknesses of my life, the insecurities that I might have had. I pray over every challenge that I feel in my soul. He said, I pray over everything. Okay? And by the way, you know what that tells me? You just put your prayer list together. Do you hear me? Because yeah. for some of you who worked this and understood what we're trying to get at, your core garbage yeah. is down here. Those things that have been not in line with the Lord. Is that right? How many of you right. got there? You got some yeah. of those things yeah. on there. Most yeah. of you do. Okay. He said, I pray over everything. Then I pray over my life. I pray over my wife's life over whatever I believe her challenges are, etc. I pray over my adult children. I pray over their families. I pray over the church staff. I pray over the church. He said, we always have a church split. I asked him, I said, really? He said, yeah, we'll have 500 league, but 20,000 got saved that Sunday. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna hope that they're gonna go and keep serving the Lord. That's the way I'd feel about it too if I saw 20,000 people get saved and 500 left. I don't mean to make light of it, but I found it humorous. Come on. He said, he said, I pray over, our, uh, over the city. He said, Rob, I know the areas of my city that are not open to the gospel yet. I pray over those specific areas. I know clans of people that are not open to the gospel. I specifically pray over them. I'll pray that over our mission field where we've sent people out. And he said, and then I stop and quiet my heart. And I wait until the Lord told me what to do with every one of those areas. I thought, wow, that's powerful. He gets up and he does that. That's what he does. So you're asking the Lord right now with me, Lord, speak into these areas of, of messed up beliefs. Amen? Amen? And you need to hear from him. Now I want to tell you something, and I don't mean to trivialize my life before God, but I'm going to. My prayer life at times has been, Lord, here's the list of what I need you to do today. Now, have I ever said it that way? No, but in all practicality, I was giving him my need list. And then when I was done, I didn't want to hear him. I wanted him to go and do it. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Isn't this ugly? Yeah. Uh, it is ugly, isn't it? Yeah. And then to, <clears throat> tomorrow, <clears throat> I'll come and check with you and see how you've done, Lord. Check off the ones you've done and give you some attaboys. And if you haven't done enough, <laughs> there's going to be trouble in our relationship. huh? You might say, really, Robbie? Well, the, those tendencies, I've seen a lot of people treat God like that. Rather than, Lord, I'm in love with you, and you're in love with me. huh? You know, I want to hear what you have to say about every difficult area of my life. So I want to pray for you right now. How many of you are ready to write? Yeah. Okay. Here's what I want you to write. What is Jesus saying? Take them one by one, all ten. Do them one at a time. Let the Lord speak to you. 
write it in first person, let him address the whole issue that you have written down, let it be a fresh word, fresh word of the Lord for you. John 7, you got it inside, all right? So I want to pray for you. And would you just, if you're sitting close to somebody, just reach over and touch them right now for just a minute. Just, just touch them. Touch them on their arm, their shoulder, somewhere appropriate. Lord, we pray your anointing on every person here. We need desperately to hear your voice. Or Lord, all we've done is surface problems. And yet what you've wanted is us to bring our stuff to you so that we could, we could bring it to you and then hear what you have to say. <clears throat> what are you saying about our heartache? What are you saying to a girl that you so love that was <clears throat> locked up when she was little? What are you saying to her? What are you saying to a guy who believes he has to be perfect? Lord, come and speak life. Break the bonds of the enemy that there be new confidence released. I declare an open ear to you. I break all distractions from your life. I mute your ears to the voice of the enemy. I declare upon you that you will be able to separate bone from marrow, flesh from his word and spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let your father talk to you. Amen? Amen? And write it down on all 10 issues. I'll give you...